All right, let's go. SAT prep week four. We got a lot to do. All right. We are going to do the first half of Passport to Advanced Math. Let's just make sure that's Passport to Advanced Math. And then week six, complete problem solving and data analysis, you know, and then uh, make a plan to study the other topics in math. Okay, six week SAT prep. Well, that's the way it's got to go. But you know what? It's a, it's good. We're going to get a lot, a lot of prep in. Okay, so hopefully your heart of algebra is all dark blue, dark, dark blue, like that blue. And so let's go over the basics for the first seven solving quadratic equations. Okay, so, you know, when we solve quadratics, there are some different things to know. So let's just talk about that. Um, there's the square root method. Oh my gosh. Square root method. That's for vertex form. Do you know about vertex form? A x minus h squared plus k. If you have that, then you can use the square root method where you isolate and square root both sides. And we're actually going to do that here. If you have a standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, if y equals that, then of course you're going to want to uh, use that quadratic formula, or you can factor, right? And then if you have factored form, then solving is so easy, right? X minus uh, M, X minus N, and the solutions are just M and N, you know? Use that zero product property. Okay, so that's just a quick review here. Um, square root method is always the first one to look for if you just have the one variable. So we're gonna divide by two, divide by two, so we get 36 equals x squared. We're going to square root both sides, and we know the answer is plus or minus 6. Right? Uh, remember that sometimes we will need to simplify square roots. Okay. So this one is super simple. I'm skipping it. Uh, all right. So we still have only one variable term. So that's the square root product. Yeah, you're going to get the 100 on the other side, divide, and uh, you'll be fine with that. You got a lot to do. So I am just, these are just very simple. Okay, square root, they're all the square root. Okay, so maybe we'll get some, some more difficult ones. Uh, hmm. I hope it's not just because I have the simple ones, but it's okay. You will put what you need to in the organizer. Let's go on to interpreting nonlinear expressions. The following equation shows H, the height in meters above the ground of a football T seconds after a particular kick. What was the height at the moment uh, of the kick? <clears throat> All right. So again, let's think about so nonlinear expressions, uh, most likely that could be exponential or quadratic. There's plenty of others, but let's start with these. So exponential is a times b to the x. A is your y-intercept. B is your common ratio or the growth decay factor. It's like a slope, but we know that exponential is a curve. So it's describing the shape of the curve. And quadratic, uh, you have the three forms, which I mentioned just a few minutes ago, which I have got, right? 
So hopefully you can write them just as easily. So in standard form, C is your Y intercept. In vertex form, we know the vertex is H comma K, right? Just switch the sign on H. And then in factored form, right here, we know that M and N zero are the X intercepts. So if you have quadratic because you have a degree two, then see what form you have, and then you'll know what you can uh, easily find and you know uh, what else you can might need to look for. You know, so here we have standard form, and we know that that is the height of the football at the moment of the kick because it's the y-intercept. It's the height at the beginning. And so we know that the y-intercept is the beginning value. Check. Okay. There it is, exponential. What is the initial amount? So now the y-intercept is right there. It's at 1,500. This is quadratic again. This time it's in vertex form. <clears throat> and they're asking us for the maximum. The maximum monthly revenue. Uh, so is that the Y value? Well, let's see. The Q is the number of pairs of shoes. And R of Q is the revenue, the Y value. Here's the Y value, the vertex. See how this is really nice. Here this is. What is that? That is a weirdly, you know, unsimplified standard form, right? Because we got this thing, this number that can be distributed, and then bada bing, bada boom, you'd be in standard form. Golden Gate Bridge is a suspension bridge that consists of two cables hung from the two towers of equal heights, 1280 meters apart. The function models the height of each cable above the ground and relates to the what is the height of the tower in meters? So the height of the tower in meters, is that the y-intercept? It may be, it may not be, I don't know, we'll find out. It is the y-intercept. Okay, here we have exponential. What, uh, first introduced, there it is, the y-intercept. So I'm just looking for those keywords that tell me the beginning and what else. I did good on that one. Okay, we got two down. Now we got five to go. Quadratic and exponential word problems. Okay, so um, we want to find the approximate temperature after two hours, and T represents hours. So just substitute and calculate. So 22 plus 53, 0.74. To two, uh, two, and the calculator question. So I have confidence in you. I'm just going to skip uh, three seconds. Oh, the function models kinetic energy in joules of a baseball traveling in the speed of x meters per second. Another substitution question, and how did I know the x meters per second? And they gave me 40 meters per second, so just substitute it in. Okay, all right, so we're going to just let you guys do that one quadratic and exponential word problems. Okay, all right. Moving on to manipulating quadratic and exponential word problems. If y equals 2 times x squared minus 5x plus 7, standard form, is graphed in the xy plane, which of the following characteristics of the graph is displayed as a constant or coefficient in the equation? The constant is the y-intercept. The coefficient is the is not in there. I mean, the x intercepts are not the coefficients. The x coordinate and the y coordinate and the vertex are not given because it's in standard form. That would be vertex form. 
So the y-intercept is the only thing that we see easily. Now this, what form is this? This is in factored form. And what do we know? We know the x-intercepts. And that's what we know. Okay. What form is this? Vertex form. And what do we know? The vertex. Oh, but it's not the minimum one, though, because this is the, this is, has a negative A value, which means it has a maximum. So I need to be careful. We do know the X coordinate of the line of symmetry of one. Tricky, tricky. Oh, right, X intercepts. Okay, that's standard form, but it's also kind of vertex form, right? Because it could be x minus zero. We, so we do know the vertex is zero, negative nine. And then we also know the y-intercept is negative nine. So we know the y-coordinate of the vertex and the y-intercept two and three. That was fun. Okay. This is not so bad. So we got one, two, three, four, five, no, five, six, seven. So we're going to do radicals and rationals. And then next time we'll do, start with operations of polynomials. Okay. Uh, rules of exponents. Let's review. We have our product rule. What do we do with the exponents there? We add them, two plus three. What about here? What do we do with the exponents? We subtract them. That would be three minus two. And what about here? What do we do with the exponents? We multiply them. So this first one is called the product rule. This next one is called the quotient rule. And this one I always call the power to a power rule. And then I wonder if there's a more sophisticated name, but that's how I do it every year. So right here we see the power to a power rule and the product rule all together. So first of all, that's gonna be B to the eighth. So then that simplifies to B third times B to the eighth. And then we would add those exponents and get b to the 11. And so x equals 11. Wasn't that fun? Ah, let's not forget the negative exponents and the zero exponent. So by the end of this, you can have all the exponent rules. What is x to the zero? Anything to the zero? It's one. And what about our negative exponent? What if I have a negative exponent? What does that even mean? That means reciprocate it, right? So we see one half to the negative second. What does that mean? That means two to the positive second. Why? Because one half to the negative second is the same as, you know, just going the long way, it would be the same as that, which is the same as that and then one to the second is just one. And so that would be four. Um, so when you see a fraction raised to a negative exponent, you can do the reciprocal to the same exponent, only positive. So pretty cool, huh? Three to the zero is one. So the answer is five. Two squared plus one is five. <clears throat> I like these problems here. Not too bad. Power to a power rule, a to the ninth times a to the negative ninth. Add those exponents and we get a to the zero, which is one, not zero. Okay. Uh, this one, just one important note. Make sure that you also raise the two to the fifth power. So it's going to be 2 to the 5th power times y to the 10th power times z to the 50th. A lot of people forget that. 
So 32Y10Z50. We see that? Aha. And I didn't even look. Which I hope that that's how you solve the multiple choice. Um, okay. If C is not equal to zero, what is the value of the expression? Okay. Well, C is not equal to zero. I know probably not zero, right? Uh, so this whole thing is going to be one because it's raised to the zero power plus seven minus four. So negative one plus seven is six minus four is two. It's strangely simple. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now we're going on to the equations. So radical equations, what do we do? We get the radicals by themselves on their own side. And we use the inverse of the radical, which is squaring. If it were the cube roots, we would cube. And then we end up with x equals 3x. And then uh, the only answer to that would be the only answer to that would be uh, zero. Anything else is not going to be equal, you know. And how do I know that? I would do. I would get the x's on their own side, or yeah. So the x. Sorry. X minus three x equals zero. Negative two x equals zero. X equals zero. You know. But sometimes you just want to stop and say what would make it true, just like you did when you were a fifth grader. You know. You remember that when you used to solve and say, why do I have to show my work? You're making me waste all this time. Now you're about to take the SAT and you're probably like, well, I have to show my work. Good for you. All right. So. And plus two equals a n square root. And so we're going to just square both sides. And we're going to get n squared plus four n plus four equals a n. So square radical goes away and I expand it on this side. And now I'm gonna read the rest. In the equation above, a is a constant. If n equals one is the solution, what is the value of a? So n equals one is the solution. Okay, so let's get that a over, let's get the, uh, the n over to the other side. This is a good one. So n n equals one is a solution. That means that we can put one in. Oh, that means we can put one in for n. So now I wish that I would have read. The uh, the thing because if I would have read it, I probably wouldn't have done that. <clears throat> so now we get three equals the square root of a minus one. And now I'm gonna square both sides. A minus one equals nine, 10, a equals 10. So let's see if 10, it works. It should have, should have read it, you know, <clears throat> okay. What is the greatest value of X that is the solution to the above equation? So, so with this one, before you square both sides, make sure you get that 13 over. You gotta isolate the radical before you square. So we get 7 13 X equals square root of X. And now we square both sides. So we get seven squared over 13 squared X squared equals x square root of x squared is x. And so with that 49 over 169 x squared minus x equals zero, since x is quadratic. And so it's quadratic, so I can't. And it's in standard form. I can use the quadratic formula, or I can factor. And I'm going to factor because I see an easy GCF of x. I take that out. And 
then I must do that. Uh, and so one value is zero and using the zero product property, I can get the other answer. And so that's one equals 49 over 169 X reciprocal reciprocal probably could have done that you know in a faster way but I'm just doing this in the way that I would do it to show you how I would think about it and hey I got it right so <clears throat> As long as if you if you have a method that takes a little bit longer, but you know that you can do it quickly, then just go for it, you know, and then uh, yeah, use that fluency, that fast calculations. What is the sum of all the solutions to the above equation? Okay, I can just do this one. Square both sides. Go for it. Oh my gosh, was that right? That's crazy. Oh no, it wasn't right. Good. Uh, and then here, okay, we should probably do this one because there are two radicals. Okay, so we, we, we want the radical terms on their own side. So we're going to have the square root of s is on that side. And then we want the 4 root s on that side too. So we'll make it negative since it's positive where it is. Seven's got to move to the other side, so that'll be negative seven. The six is on that side, staying on that side. That's going to be negative one. And then now on this side, we can factor out the square root of s, and we get one minus uh, four. Oh, wow. Those are like terms, so that's negative three. Negative three root s equals negative one. So then the square root of s equals, if you divide both sides by negative three, equals positive one third. And now we can square both sides and we get s equals one ninth, because one third squared is one ninth. All right. is not so bad. So we just, I just did one, two, three, four, five, six, and now we got one more. Okay, of course though, these, I'm just doing the big six in this video. And so make sure that you do these again and again. And I know the difficulty will increase, but I know you're gonna be ready for it. All right, operations with rational, rational means, in math, it means fraction. So here we have fractions. So we need common denominators, which are the following is the cool equivalent. So we want to we combine these like terms. If we multiply the first one by three, we will do that. We'll make that 9x over 6b minus 5x over 6b. And that would be 4x over 6b which I do not see, but I can reduce that to two thirds x b. Do I see that? I do, that's d. <clears throat> All right, get those common denominators, multiply the second one by y, you'll get it just fine. Woo, look at that, okay. Now, when we have rationals, make sure that you factor. Let me just write the steps to rational math. Factor, factor, factor. Just factor. Okay, so when you do that, it gets really simple. So do I have to factor this one? No, what about this one? Ah, seven. Seven is the GCF, 4W plus three. And then look at that 4W plus three, see? So now that I factored it, I see I just have to multiply this one by seven and I'll have common denominators. You see? 
factor, factor, factor. So, all right, so let me write that first one. And now I'm just gonna, uh, we do the simplification in the numerator, but we usually leave the denominator unsimplified or in factor form because we're not gonna be, you know, you don't add the denominators, but you have to simplify in the numerator. That's why we do it that way. So, okay. So 8v minus 21v. What is 8 minus 20, 21? Is that 13? 13, 12, 13, 13. So uh, negative 13v plus 70 over 7, parentheses, 4w plus 3. Negative 13v. Oh, is it minus 70? Negative 13v minus 70. Oh, right. <clears throat> yes, of course, because this is subtracting both of them. So it ends up being minus 70. I knew that. OK. x minus 5, 5 minus x. You may say to yourself, these look very similar. How did they do that? The way they did that is because if you uh, factor out a negative 1 to that first one, if you put a negative 1 in front, what would that do? That would make that a negative 5 and a plus x, which is x switched around x minus 5. See? So x minus 5 is the same as a negative 5 minus x. So really all that means is we can multiply the second one by negative 1, and we will have common denominators. So that would make it minus 4 over x minus 5 uh, with a negative in front. I mean, it will not have a negative in front. It will just be common denominators. And then 7 minus 4 is 3. So it's going to be 3 over x minus 5. I am just doing a good job tonight. Sorry. OK, wow. It doesn't count. I just was skipping it because I just did it. All righty then. That is the first seven in Passport to Advanced Math. I know you're going to do great, and so you try those. And in addition to trying those, make sure you take the Midway SAT at practice test. We're going to do practice test three, okay? And have a great time. Have fun. It's a celebration of knowledge. <laughs>